and welcome to Wealthy and Winning Day One. I'm so excited to get my teeth stuck into today. I know if you watched the welcome video, today's topic was going to be something a little bit different, but I've been looking at my notes this morning and I'm kind of feeling called to share something else. And so I messaged my team and I was like, what do you think if we change this? And they're like, yeah, that's that's the vibe. So today we're going to be talking about the self-sabotaging behavior around making money is so hard making money takes so much hard work I don't have time to make all this money right so we're going to dive into that but first I want to touch on our subconscious blueprint right because that's important to understand about when you start talking about these limiting beliefs okay so between the ages of one and seven our brains are like little sponges they are just absorbing and taking in everything that's happening around us. Between the ages of one to seven, we're just like little sponges that just soak up everything. And then once we turn seven, we start to get this like logical processing, critical thinking where we can start to make decisions about, you know what? I think grandpa might be lying if he tells me I need to eat my crust or my hair will fall out. We start to develop this logical thinking. I remember being like, I, my grandpa told me that we could never leave fruit um, around because kangaroos would eat it and die, right? This was always his like, and I guess it was his way of teaching me to when we go on a hike or something, always take all your rubbish home with you. But when I later found out that it, if a kangaroo eats a piece of apple skin, he's not going to die. I felt like so betrayed, but he told me it in this window where I didn't have critical processing. So it became this rule in my head and I've never littered anywhere even if it's like an apple skin or a banana peel or something you know how people throw it out the car I'm like no I'm taking it home to the rubbish bin so it doesn't hurt an animal <laughs> and then my kid my kid my 10 year old son's like mom it will compost it's not gonna hurt anything <laughs> right so between the ages of one and seven what we are told our brains perceive as true right so if you're this little sponge sitting at home and your mom is telling you that money is the root of all evil and your dad's saying that making money is so hard and your grandma is saying that wealthy people are really selfish and evil, your brain thinks that's true. It takes it as truth. It takes it as gospel. And that is what it believes. And that creates a blueprint for the rest of your life. Even as you grow up and you start to realize making money, I don't think is that hard. Subconsciously, you're like making money is really hard. And we think, you know, grandma said that wealthy people were really selfish and evil and disgusting. And you're like, but they're not. But your subconscious is like, no, money bad. Money bad, money unsafe. Money will mean everyone hates us. So get rid of it. Get rid of the money, right? You can see where this subconscious is actually running the show. Your inner seven-year-old child is the one in there pushing, you know, like Inside Out, the movie. If you've worked with me, if you've done any of my courses or read any of my books, you know, there will be a lot of Disney Pixar references. It's how I process and how I educate people. (laughs) Like go watch this kid's movie, come back and tell me what you think, right? There is an inner seven-year-old in there pushing all the buttons and doing all the things, sabotaging you every step of the way in a misguided attempt to keep you safe. Make sense? That was important and it's going to be important over the next three days. All right, so let's dive into the belief that making money is hard which is bullshit, right? If the idea of making money is hard work was right, if that was actually true, it would make sense that the people who work the hardest would be the wealthiest, right? And this is where we can totally get into a competition about who works the hardest, but let's just think of it from like a hard backbreaking labor situation. The plumbers, laborers, stay at home mums to 11 kids, nurses, firefighters, paramedics, doctors, they would be the wealthiest in society right if that rule was true however what we see most of the time in reality is the direct opposite of that and this kind of calls out the idea that making money is hard work as a complete and total lie and yet this idea is so commonplace now because people feel they can't make any more money any other way than exchanging their time for an hourly rate with their boss you know, the award standard. And the federal budget has come out recently. There's no wage increases coming. So a lot of that can end up making a lot of us feel really powerless. They believe that somehow, we believe that somehow our boss is in charge of our financial reality and not us or not you. 
we often find the only way to have more money is to work more hours when this is just not true. Not in every case. Your boss may be in charge of this one stream of income, but studies have shown that the average millionaire earner makes income from at least seven different streams of revenue. Seven. And they can still manage time for a beach vacation, watching their favorite show and getting a massage. So you can too. Once you rewire your thoughts and release the idea that making money has to be this hard thing, so many new opportunities will open up to you. When I think about the money is hard work limiting belief, one particular client of mine I've worked with comes to mind and she has permitted me to share a little bit of her story with you all. I've shared about it in the book too, um, Goodbye Money Girl. So you can definitely go and read a bit more about it in there. But Katie, she watched her mother and father work seven days a week in their grocery store her entire childhood. And throughout her teenage years, she worked in the grocery store as well as a local news agency. You know, anytime she wanted something for herself, she was reminded money doesn't grow on trees. We work for what we want. Her parents had an incredible work ethic, something that Katie is proud to have inherited from them. And it's been a major contributing part of her success still she also remembers all the early starts and the late nights her parents did running the store. And the only time she really ever saw them relax was on their two-week river holiday they took every October as a family. We've worked so hard this year. We finally deserve a break, her father would say. She was encouraged to study hard, get good grades and go to university to get a good paying job, which she did as a counsellor. However, her sabotaging behavior started to emerge as her client space for her counseling business expanded. She took on so much work that she could handle. She charged much less than she should and much less than anyone else in her industry for her hourly rate. And even when she had money, she felt guilty. She felt as if she didn't work hard enough. So she pushed herself to do even more. And this quickly led to a phone call to me mid burnout in her mid twenties, right? So Katie's childhood experiences created the belief in her subconscious that money can only be earned through hard work, lots of studies, sacrificing a lot of time and primarily working till you drop. Eventually she came to her senses and concluded that working harder may not always be the answer to making more money. That's when she reached out to me, right? So I worked with Katie to reframe her idea of how money can be made. And she started being inspired in ways that she never had before. Her counseling continued to expand, but with healthy boundaries in place. We did the energetic work to be able to raise her prices to a level where they were much more aligned. And she even wrote a little book about her burnout experience, which is now providing her with passive income stream. Katie's now pregnant with her first child. Um, actually, you know, She's had her first job now and she's looking and stepping into real estate investing too. She knows that making money can take some consistency and effort, but it can also be made and most importantly, interacted with ease and flow. The most significant transformation for Katie was when she realized the need to feel like she had worked hard enough to be deserving of money she made because really who gets to decide your enoughness? and your deservedness, except for you. Making money can be hard work, but it can also be easy and fun. I, I, I love my job. I love what I do. I love working. There is no part of me that is excited about a retirement plan. I love working, right? But I also get to make money in really fun ways. It comes through to me on autopilot. Some days I log on in the morning and there's been all this stuff come through overnight, right? Whereas other days I'm working my ass off and sending out invoices and it happens. It can be easy and fun depending on what you choose. And you are deserving and worthy of financial abundance just because you are. So action steps. Here's something you can do. Research and reframe your idea of how money is made. For example, did the, you know, the kids on YouTube make thousands of dollars unboxing and reviewing toys? And there are even people out there making money selling pictures of their feet online. Yes, this is a real thing. Oh my God, there was a girl in Australia who made $280,000 last year selling her farts in a jar. Yep. 500 bucks. She's like, that might be 500 bucks. I'll take a video. She'd get a clear jar, put it to her asshole, fart in it, put the lid on and post it to someone for $500. There is no excuse. You cannot be out there doing what you want to do and making money in a fun and creative way, right? 
I highly recommend Gary Vee's book, Crushing It. It is fantastic for helping you broaden your idea of how money is made. And using empowering affirmations to rewire your attitude towards money. Um, Katie's favorite affirmation doing this trans, like transformation and transition for her, if I remember correctly, was like, I believe that money comes into my life every day in expected and unexpected ways that are fun and easy. And I choose that making money gets to be fun and easy for me. I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> I'll try and copy it into the email as well. So that's some little action tips. That's day one of Wealthy and Winning. And I will see you tomorrow. We're going to be diving into a super juicy topic. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram, Facebook, send reviews, do whatever, tag sexy selfish and use the hashtag wealthy and winning to share your takeaways and what you are getting from this little mini course. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow.